Our dear viewers and listeners, we greet you in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yet again, this is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to today's Bible study. We invite you or request you to invite somebody to join you. So that together we may explore the revelation of God's word. Because truth revealed brings freedom. So let's get into God's word. But before we do that, I'm going to ask us to humble ourselves in God's presence. And let's dedicate this moment to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you yes, Lord. for your grace. Mm. We acknowledge your love, your presence, your power yes, Lord. in thy word. Mm. Today we open our spirits to receive the engrafted word, yes, Lord. which is able to serve us. Mm. Open our eyes, yes, Lord. reveal Jesus, yes, Lord. the hope mm. and grace mm. and peace to us, King of Glory. Yes, Lord. Let your word come alive in our spirits mm. and in all that hear it, mm. that they will come back with testimonies of the grace and power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 We will be taking our reading from the book of Romans. Chapter 3, from verse 21 to verse 26. Let's read. But now, the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood. Through faith to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance, God has passed over the sins that were previously committed. To demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he may be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. This is our text for today. And we will pick it up from where we left last week. Last week we dealt from verse 21 up to verse 22. Uh, trying to understand this message of justification. And to understand what justification is all about. Because we saw the condemnation. And from the message of condemnation, which we see from Romans chapter 1, verse 18, all the way to Romans chapter 3 and verse 20 paints the picture for us that all humanity outside of Jesus Christ are guilty and they are all condemned. There is no exception 
teri yo olia itawu now having understood that ngatumazo chitegeda we now see katitulaba the message of justification obubako boku gobo musangu god moving from one extreme katonda ngava kuluyuli eliye wala to the other nadda kuluyuli he now paints the picture for us tenva tusigire chifana that but now the righteousness of god apart from the law is revealed what is it that we see with this justification last week we saw four points the first one is that there is a justification that god has revealed that is apart from the law the second point we note about this justification is that this justification has has been witnessed by the law and the prophets omusango guno gwagobibwa gujulirwa abanna bine naba naba na and it is not a new phenomenon chino sicha joko pacha god has not changed his mind katonda tanaba kuchusa ndo wozanya concerning how sin should be treated kungeje jetu ino kutunulira hb so from the law and the prophets kati okuva mu mateka ne banabi god has been consistent katonda ze tachuka the test the scriptures bear witness to this fact the third truth that we saw is that this justification has a provider and this provider is god himself and the fourth point that we saw is how this justification is to be received and we saw that it is received through faith in jesus christ and the scripture ends on verse 22 by saying to all and on all who believe so everyone who believes to them and on them is given this justification that is by faith and the bible goes on to say for there is no difference and what is he trying to say what he now opens up in verse 23 is the fifth aspect that we see concerning justification where he says for there is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god so every person in the history of this world whether past whether present until the coming of the age the bible is very emphatic it says all have sinned and all fall short of God's glory. So there is no exception whatsoever. So everyone has come short of the perfect holiness of God. So God's standard like we saw if we want to understand it equates to God's glory. So he says all have fallen short of the glory of God. So the standard God has set which is his perfect holiness which cannot be brought down can only be equated to his glory. So the standard is not your neighbor. So the standard is not your religious leader. So the standard is not anybody you can 
Think about it. When we use the skirts, and we saw that that is the standard that we knew to get the word righteousness from the Greek. On one hand is the glory of God. Now on the other side is you and I. And the what the Bible tries to point out here is that we have been weighed and we come short in terms of reaching the perfection that God desires. How short? Very, very short. Every person in this world. Because we all come short of the glory of God. Means that we need the righteousness that God provides. We need the righteousness that only God can give. Other than that, there is no way of standing before him justified. So there is not a person on the face of this earth who does not need the righteousness of God that is found in Christ Jesus. Everyone needs that righteousness. And the Bible goes on to say being justified freely by his grace. Let's say it again. Being justified freely by his grace. Now, I want us to look at this passive verb that is used here. It says being justified. That means we cannot justify ourselves. There has to be someone who is the justifier. So that's why he says being justified. So that puts two categories of people. The justified and the justifier. So the, it is the justifier that removes this condemnation and justifies somebody else. So the question is, who is the justifier? Verse 26 tells us that to demonstrate that at the present time is righteousness. That he might be just. And the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. So it is God and let me say it, it is God and God alone who can justify us. All matters is what God does. So it is only God that can has the final say with regard to our justification. It is only God who makes that declaration. And you know what? Once he makes that declaration, it takes place immediately. So when you place our faith in Jesus Christ, God, Katonda, the just one, declares us justified. And that justification takes place 
immediately. Once we believe in Christ Jesus. So wherever you are, the moment you place your faith in Christ Jesus, God justifies you. And therefore the Bible tells us being justified. So if it is God who justifies, there is no other court of appeal. He is the ultimate. The, nobody can overrule that matter. And that implies two things. Number one, that your justification is full and complete. There is nothing that can be added to it. There can never be a moment where you will be more justified. If I may use that word, where you may be more justified than when you believed in Christ Jesus. Because at that point, God God declares you his righteousness. So you are justified and in the eyes of God you now meet the standard. You have been taken from condemnation and through faith in Jesus Christ now God pronounces you justified what has happened and this is what we often miss for many people when we come to Christ we only understand one aspect of it and what is the aspect the aspect that your sins are forgiven but there is more to that it is not just the sins taken away the sins taken away is one aspect which is the forgiveness of sin but there is another aspect that we often overlook which is the imputed righteousness and the word imputation means there has been a credit so through faith in Christ God credits you with his righteousness with his glory so it is not just a removal the sin that separated you from God has now been removed so now you I join with God. The one that the scripture tells us that he that is joined to God is one spirit with him. So you are now joined with God. And God now credits you with his Righteousness. So you go from negative to positive. And that is an aspect that we need to understand. That it is not just your sins that have been forgiven. But now, you have been credited. A deposit has been made to your account. And that deposit is God's righteousness. So it is not just that you are no longer in debt but it means that you have now moved to a place whereby the glory of God has been credited to you. And then we go to the next aspect which we see in verse 24. And the Bible says being justified freely what does that mean? It means that this justification is given to you 
free of charge. You don't pay anything to get it. The Bible says being justified freely by his grace. Grace gives you what you don't deserve. So what God has done when we place our faith in Jesus Christ he freely justifies us by his grace. Now, I, to, for you to understand this deeper, let's contrast to what? For those of you who have worked for something and you have been paid, let's say you have done a job or you are in gainful employment. At the end of it, of the period, that has been agreed. You are paid a wage or a salary. Now, when your employer pays you, they are not giving you a gift. It is something you have labored for. It is something that you have toiled for. You deserve it. Because you have worked for it. You have earned it. It is yours. You deserve it. So once you understand, so that is what is around the salary or a payment. But when we talk about a gift, it is the total opposite of what we are trying to say. How? Because you don't work for the gift. It is given to you freely. Basically, you have done nothing to deserve it. God gives it to you graciously. So if somebody came to give you a gift, if you have worked for it, then it's not a gift. You earned it. But if you have not earned it, and it is given to you, then it is a gift. It is free of charge. It is the giver that has chosen to give you, not because you deserve. No, it is because they have just decided to give it to you. And that is exactly what we are talking about here. God gives his righteousness freely to those who have done nothing to deserve it. As a matter of fact, what we deserved was condemnation. So everything that we ever did was to bring us to the place of condemnation. Therefore, having no merit on our own, having nothing to speak to us, imprisoned by sin weak without any help whatsoever with nothing to deserve coming out of that situation. This is what the Bible says. Then freely we are being justified by God's grace. Right. So it's not, you see, at the end of the day, and I want this to stick in your mind, it's not that you go to a restaurant, for example, and God says, I will foot the bill. And then you say, okay, since you've been that generous, I, I will pay the tip. Or, or you say, okay, I will pay the parking. No, that's not it. Here, he does everything. <laughs> there, there is nothing <laughs> that you do. So you, you cannot even add to the gift that God has given. Whatever he has paid, he has paid for it in full. <laughs> 
And then he says, being justified freely by his grace. Through the redemption <laughs> that is in Christ Jesus. Listen to that. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. This is amazing. Because here he draws something. He brings a word to the front. He draws the term redemption and says, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now, let me paint this picture for you. This word redemption as used here is the Greek word apolutrosis. Now, the word apolutrosis uh, I will come to it later. But I want to use it with a two other terms that are both Greek. The first word is the word agorazo. Now, agorazo means to be in a marketplace. And in the marketplace, what happens there? In the marketplace, you have buying and selling. So there is buying and there is selling. So there are people who are selling and there are people who are buying. So that is what agorazo is all about. Now there is another Greek word which I want to bring to the forefront as well. Which is the word exoagorazo. Now exoagorazo is an interesting one. Because this one also is interpreted to mean redemption. So it means to redeem. Now, this word would carry this meaning. So, if I went to the marketplace and bought something, so if I walked out and somebody came and haggled and said, I'll give it to you at a higher price than what you bought. Exoagorazo would mean you're saying no. I have purchased this one and it is not up for sale again. So when we talk about redemption, I want you to understand what it means. It means there has been a, a re redemption. There has been a purchase. But after this purchase, there is no intention by the purchaser to put up this item for sale again. For any price. Now, this is the, what I want you to understand that happened when you were redeemed. The Bible here says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. It carries this meaning that Christ purchased you and at whatever price you cannot be put up for sale. Again. But let's look at the word apolytrosis that is portrayed here. It means to pay a ransom in order to secure the release of one that is held captive by the tyranny of another. Now, this is a term we pick from the slave market. So, when you bought a slave, here what is implied that you were securing their freedom. So, what is happening here? It is 
It represents release by paying ransom. So the price that was paid was intended to procure a release, a deliverance, a rebellion, and this was paid for by a ransom. So but that's why the Bible goes on to say Bible, that for that. by freedom we have been set free. So Christ has redeemed us but with the understanding or the principle of setting us free. So what happened here? Jesus Christ Jesus entered into this world invaded by the invaded this slave market of mankind of all men bound he came into our prison and through his perfect life his sinless life and his substitutionary death on the cross he purchased in full the redemption of all sinners who were held captive by the chains of sin under the cruel tyranny of the devil. So when he dealt with sin, then those that place their faith in him are now set free from the hold over the devil of their life. So the price that he paid is the price to secure the release of those who place their faith in him. So the prison of sin, the chains that held humanity, once you place your faith in him, the chains are broken and you are set free. So when we talk about redemption, the Bible says you have been purchased. So there is not a drop of saving grace outside the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So there is nothing more than, that can purchase your redemption. The price was paid in full. There is no date anymore. Once your faith has been placed in Christ Jesus, everything about you is redeemed. This is not... So there is no one that can ever put you up for sale again. No, no, no system can get you back. This salvation that we talk about in redemption is by grace alone. Through faith alone. In Christ Jesus alone. Let's repeat this. And say this redemption. Is by grace alone. In other words, you don't earn it. And it comes through faith alone. There is nothing you add to it. And in Christ Jesus alone. That means there is no other that can save you. Salvation is earned in Christ Jesus alone. And the Bible says whom God has set forth. Verse 25, whom God has set forth as a propitiation 
by his blood through faith this propitiation refers to the death of Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary. And what the Bible says, whom God has set for. So what that means is that God has publicly displayed to all humanity that this one is the one. So God the Father identifies with the one who he has now put forward. So the Bible talks about set forth or publicly declared. And he makes him the propitiation in his blood through faith. Now, what is propitiation? That is the Greek word Hilasterion. Hilasterion means appeasement. It means to satisfy. Now, understanding this, this is what it means. It means that the death of Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary satisfied the righteous requirement of God. So all God's anger, all God's wrath towards sin was propitiated. It was satisfied. So the cross did not only do something to us, but it also did something to the Father. It satisfied his anger. So, they will, so that, what that means that there will never be an opportunity once you place your faith in Christ Jesus and are justified. There will never be a point when the wrath of God will be upon you. Because that in Christ Jesus has been made. And another portion of scripture says we have now, our lives have now been hid in Christ, in God. You have now put on Christ. So, so understand that and it goes on to tell us Jesus himself, John 8.36, he comes and says, and now therefore if the Son shall set you free, you will be free indeed. So you have a freedom which you have not purchased. This has been graciously given to you. When you place your faith in the person of Christ and his finished work on the cross. Why? Because it is at the cross that the death of Jesus Christ placated God's righteous anger towards those who believe in him. Outside of that, outside of Christ, Christ, the anger and the wrath of God is upon all unrighteousness and ungodliness of men. That's what the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 1 and verse 8. Also, if we went to the Old Testament to bear witness, Psalm, verse 11, listen to what it says. It says, God is a just judge. And God is angry with the wicked every day. So God's wrath every day 
is upon the wicked. So it's, there's no difference. So when Christ died on our behalf, if you place your faith in him, that propitiates the righteous and wrath of God. And no wonder later we will see the scripture says there is now therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. So there is not a drop of eternal anger that God has upon those that place their faith in Christ Jesus. All the vengeance all the anger was placed in Christ Jesus. That's why the Bible says he became sin. So when he became sin, that means he carried all sin. And all the wrath of God was upon him. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24 says he bore our sins in his body on the cross. Hallelujah. So upon the cross our sins were carried by him. If he carried the sins of the world why should you bear that burden of sin? Why should you face the wrath of God when Christ has borne that wrath? Praise be to God. I want you to say something here that we are now saying we saw the first term which is called propitiation. We saw another word which Ech. is called redemption. Ech. And we saw Ech. another word which is called justification. Ech. Now I want you to see what is happening. Propitiation. So through Christ's death, the righteous anger of God upon the sin of mankind has been satisfied. So look at what is happening. God's wrath, God's anger is directed at the sin and the unrighteousness of all men. And in that, all are condemned. So look at the condemned. And look at what happens. By propitiation, this is what happens. At the cross, the demands of justice of a just God towards sinful mankind have been met. And because they are men, this is what happens. Then humanity, on whom this wrath was directed, who now is under the bondage of sin, is now redeemed, purchased, and purchased a polytrosis set free. Not to become a slave again. Exo agorazo. Now look at oh, what oh. happens. And because of this redemption, God, who previously had wrath on them, now justifies them by faith freely as an act of grace. How wonderful. Hey, this message must be. 
And now I want you to say something more. Look at what he continues to tell us. He says whom God set forth as a propitiation in his blood. Through faith. To demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance. God had passed over. The sins that were previously committed. So it is not just us. And I want you to say something. God did not just pass over sin. No. In Christ Jesus, the penalty for sin was met. And what does he say? So now the judgment that should have been Unto all those before. God made a stay of judgment. For all the Old Testament saints. Why? Because in the future. Christ will die. So when Christ dies on the cross. Then God was able to pass over. All the former sins. That were committed before his coming. So every ceremony that happened before on the day of atonement all the Passover festivities pointed to this fact that in the fullness of time there would be one that would meet the justice requirements of God. And die for the sin of all mankind. And that one is Jesus Christ. And why did God do that? Verse 26, the Bible says, to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be the just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Look at what happens. What does God being just mean? that God may be just. God being just means that he must punish our sins. So God cannot be just with, without dealing with sin. What makes God just is when he punishes sin. Now, there is the other bit. God is not just just. He's also the justifier. So, on one hand, he punishes sin. And on the other hand, he devises a plan where a substitute must stand in our place and bear our sins. So that makes him both the just and the justifier. So that is amazing. <laughs> because then Christ <laughs> Christo comes and suffers <laughs> in our place. <laughs> he endures all the wrath <laughs> to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At that point, <laughs> all the sin of the world has been laid upon him. So the plan of God, it's like in court, where you stand guilty, and the, you are pronounced guilty, but a way is made where another takes 
what you should have deserved. Takes the punishment that you deserve. And you be set free. That is what happened to Barnabas. Barnabas. When Jesus stood, yes, where he made it up. and Pilate asked them, Pilato should I set for you Barabbas? And they said, Nebagamba. said between Barabbas and Jesus, wa baraba ne Yesu. who should I set free? Ani gwente, gwemba teda. And they said Barabbas. Nebagamba, tutele baraba. And they said, how about Jesus? Nebagamba, te Yesu. And they said, crucify him. Oh, yo, so what happened? E wo. The criminal was set free. The innocent was taken to the cross. Look at that picture. Now this is what happens to every one of us. The guilty is set free. And the one that is innocent, God Devise the plan that he bears our sins, that he bears our guilt. So, what is that? What does that mean? That means when we come to Jesus Christ by faith, God justifies us. God removes our sin. Why? Because the justice that we should have borne was borne by Jesus Christ at the cross. Then he winds this up by saying of the one who has faith in Jesus. Of the one who has faith Jesus. Yes. That means what it takes is you to place your faith in Jesus. I cannot do it for you. Your mother, your father, your uncle, however loving they are, they cannot do it for you. Your religious leader cannot do this for you. No one on the face of this earth, your loving spouse cannot do this for you. The scripture says of the one who has faith in Jesus. That is the one that receives this redemption. This is individual. You must put your faith in Christ Jesus. It is personal. You must renounce your self-righteousness. This cannot be earned. There is no self-effort that brings you to this position. You must repent of your life of pursuit of sin. So you then turn to God and through Jesus Christ you commit your life to him. And when you do that God immediately declares you righteous based on what Christ has done at the cross. So today, if you are watching us, you have never come to this place. Right now is the moment to surrender your life Jesus Christ and receive this gift which is the righteousness that God graciously gives once we place our faith in the person of Christ and his finished work on the cross. Why don't you say this prayer and surrender to him and repent of all your sins so that that burden can be carried by the God's sin bearer.
Kusitulibwe eri katonda gwe yawayo ngo mwetisi we TV. The one that John pointed us to. Yokana gwe yatulaga. When he came in the wilderness. Gwe yajja mudungu and pointed his disciples then unto us right now. Na kunalaga abayigiriza abwe mu birebyo nafe to who God's lamb is. Na tulaga omwana gwe ndi kwa katonda. Sin remover is. Oyo ndi ye katonda gwe yatuwa ajake bibibi. And he said behold the lamb of God. Naga mulabo omwana gwe ndi kwa katonda. Jesus Christ. Yesu Kristo. Who takes away the sins of the world. Ya jawe bibibi yesu. Today he can take away your sins. Lero acha asomolo kujake bibibi. It is not the host that they lift up in church. No, 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 no. It is Jesus Christ. Christo Yesu Yeka. The one that died on the cross. E yafaku musala ba. Who takes away your sins. Ya jawe bibi. Not a ceremony. Si mukolo. Not a ritual, not a sacrament. It is Jesus Christ. Bino si sacrament, Christo Yesu Yeka. Today. Nero. Bless your faith. Okukiriza kokuteke muye. Say this prayer. Damwe sali. Say God of heaven. Katondo we guru. I thank you. We baza. For the gift of salvation for the gift of righteousness for the gift of redemption that we receive by faith in Christ Jesus yes Christ and his finished work today I acknowledge that I am a sinner condemned with no hope but I place my faith Faith. In Christ Jesus and his finished work of Calvary. Lord, forgive my sin. Purify my heart. Credit my life with your righteousness. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and empower me to live victoriously according to your gracious plan for my life. Thank you for saving. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You said that prayer. You have been credited at this moment by the righteousness. You are justified by faith. God has freely justified. There is that number on the screen. Please call it. Somebody will pick it up. Give you the first instructions on this wonderful journey of faith. Faith has brought you this far. And it is that faith in Christ that will lead you all the way until you come face to face with this wonderful, beautiful redeemer who left his place of grace and glory to die in your place and mine. For those that have a wonderful saved by Jesus Christ. It's been a pleasure having you with us today. And for everyone that has been listening to us and watching us, thank you. Pray the, pray the grace of God upon your life. Continue to prosper in the life that Christ has purchased for us. And until we meet again next week, from Dominion Church International, we're saying God loves you. Shalom.